Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, as we are discussing about the adsorption, uh, its principal applications and also the isotherms in the previous lectures. Here in this lecture, we will try to understand more about the adsorption principles and also its kinetics. What is that adsorption kinetics? So, this is basically uh, regarded as uh, one of the essential and also uh, you can say that uh, useful parameter to consider while designing the adsorption system. So, in this case, uh, this kinetics parameter will determine the rate at which that adsorption occurs. And this kinetics uh, are influenced by the surface uh, complexity of the adsorbent solute and also concentration and its flow. Some of the kinetics that uh, you know foretells the adsorbent adsorbate interactions also. So, in uh, adsorption kinetics we will uh, have uh, different types of you know kinetics based on which you can assess that the rate of the adsorption which is occurred on the surface of the adsorbent. And uh, these uh, kinetics uh, can be you know uh, considered based on the suitability of surface characteristics and also the adsorbent rate uh, which is actually assessed by uh, those you know kinetics with least error. So, that can be selected based on that you know uh, fitting of that you know uh, kinetic equation with the experimental data. Here in the slides we are showing here four types of you know adsorption kinetics. One is called intra particle kinetics, another is called pseudo first order kinetics, pseudo second order kinetics and some other kinetics it is called that Ilovis kinetic out of which. So, in this case you will see that the suitability of any kinetic equation or model either it is pseudo first order, pseudo second order or Ilovis kinetic or intra particle kinetics that depends on the error level that error can be assessed by that correlation coefficient or sum of square errors that can be done by different softwares or you can uh, do it you know uh, uh, manually also just by calculating its least square value least square error value. And uh, out of these uh, actually uh, model you will see that a linear form of pseudo second order model is preferred over you know uh, that PFO model that is uh, uh, pseudo first order model. And uh, this uh, you know kinetics can be presented you know based on that uh, uh, line or curve which can be you know drawn based on that experimental data and uh, this kinetics will describe the rate of retention or release of that solute from an aqueous environment to solid phase interface. And in this case some variables to be considered those are a given adsorbent dose, temperature, flow rate and also at which pH this you know adsorption is being done. And during this adsorption two main processes are involved one is called physical absorption another is called chemical absorption as we have already discussed in our earlier lecture where physical absorption will be a result of weak forces of attraction that is called van der Waals force and uh, also the chemical absorption or it is called chemisorption which will be involved you know formation of a strong bond between the solute and the adsorbent that involves the transfer of electrons. So, this mechanism we have already discussed in our earlier lecture please go through that lectures one again. And then uh, pseudo first order model that we will try to uh, discuss about this what is that pseudo first order model. It is also known as uh, Lagargrin uh, model. This uh, model 
uh, basically describes the adsorption of solute onto adsorbent following the first order mechanism and that first order mechanism can be represented by this equation number 1 here where it is uh, uh, you know written as d q t by d t that will be equal to k 1 into q e minus q t where this q t which is adsorbed onto adsorbent surface at time t this is in milligram per gram generally being expressed and q e is the equilibrium adsorption capacity this is in terms of unit that is milligram per gram and k 1 is uh, called the rate constant per minute. And then if you integrate this equation number 1 with the uh, boundary condition uh, like if t is equal to 0 to t that means uh, if uh, within a time limit of 0 to t then uh, this you know adsorbent which is adsorbed onto the adsorbent surface that can be expressed by you know 0 to q t respectively and which yields this equation number 2. This is expressed as q t is equal to q e into 1 minus e to the power minus k 1 t and the value of k 1 here in this equation number 2 and also 1 this is called that rate constant and this rate constant can be determined by plotting this equation number 2 as per here in y axis it will be ln into q e minus q t and in x axis it will be t. So, if you draw the graph ln q e minus q t versus t then you will be able to find out what will be the rate constant there. And this rate constant is always inversely proportional to the initial concentration of the solute that you have to remember. And also uh, this constant will be varying under low pressure adsorption and under high sorbent doses. And this rate constant always will be inversely proportional to initial concentration because a longer time is required for a large initial solute concentration. So, that is why this rate constant will be inversely proportional to the initial concentration of the solute. And then you have to calculate the you know q e value. So, how to calculate that q e value that is basically what is that q e value is equilibrium adsorption capacity. So, that q e value can be calculated you know by this equation number 3. Okay. If you know that initial concentration of the solute and the concentration at a time t then what will be the difference of that concentration that means C0 minus Ct this is the concentration difference into its volume of that solution then you will get what will be the amount of you know solute will be transported divided by mass of adsorbent that is m. So, by this equation you will be able to calculate at time t you know what will be the you know that adsorbent which is adsorbed onto the surface of the adsorbent. When in this case t is equal to the equilibrium contact time then in that case this C t that means concentration of adsorbent at time t will be equal to C e, C e means what equilibrium concentration there and hence we can say that q t will be equal to q e like this. And then the amount of adsorbent which is adsorbed at equilibrium q e can be calculated using that equation. Okay. So, here in this graph in the slide it is shown that how q t is varying with respect to time. This is the typical profile of q t versus time. You will see that the adsorption amount will be increased with respect to time t and after a certain time this you know q t will be 
you know reached in a in an equilibrium condition. So, in the dotted line it is shown a typical you know typical equilibrium data there in the graph for a typical value q t versus time plot. Okay. So, here this will be your equilibrium you know amount of adsorbed bed which is adsorbed onto the surface of adsorbent at equilibrium time T e. Here this you will see that this adsorption amount will be increasing with respect to time as well as it will be increasing with respect to the increasing initial concentration. Let us uh, have an example to calculate that Q e value and also K 1 value that means equilibrium adsorbent uh, you know amount and also the rate of adsorption. Okay. Here in this case uh, uh, the adsorption of cadmium ions onto bones are has been you know studied using a bas adsorbed. The experimental data was analyzed using absorption kinetic models. The pseudo first order you know models can be you know considered for this you know experimental data and it is observed that this first order pseudo first order model will be fitting uh, uh, you know that in the uh, uh, least square with the least square error. So, in this case you have to find out the equilibrium amount of adsorbed and the rate constant. So, here in this table it is given for different initial concentration of that you know solute the you know q t versus time value are given in the you know table. You will see the first two columns here there is a time versus q t with respect to initial concentration C 0 at 2.14 millimole and uh, similarly in the third fourth and fifth sixth column the uh, q t versus time values are given with respect to initial concentration of C 0 respectively. So, under this you know or based on this experimental data you have to find out what will be the you know q e value and also rate constant. So, what to do here you have to plot the graph here as q t versus time as shown in the figure here it is drawn here with respect to this data at different initial concentration here this data is this this graph is for the initial concentration of 2.14 millimole of solute okay so in this case uh, the qt versus time is uh, you know keep on increasing and it will reach an equilibrium condition here which uh, can be obtained from this point here similarly for other initial concentration of 2.69 here the plot is like this red line here and here also after a certain time it will reach an equilibrium condition and corresponding equilibrium equilibrium value you can get it from here. And similarly for other initial concentration 3.17 millimole this uh, you know here uh, blue line uh, it is shown here uh, this equilibrium data. So, from this equilibrium data you can easily calculate what will be the equilibrium amount of adsorbate which is adsorbed onto the adsorbent. And uh, to calculate that k 1 what you have to do you have to fit this you know equilibrium uh, data with that you know model equation here given q t is equal to q e into 1 minus e to the power minus k 1 t. Okay. So, in this case to calculate this you know uh, k 1 or q e value from this data you can do it like this q e minus q t uh, versus you know that time and then from that you will be able to calculate what will be the k 1 value. So, after fitting or just you can do it just solving nonlinear equation by any you know numerical method you can also solve it and after solving you can get that corresponding value of q e and k 1 value as given in this you know uh, table here after calculation I have calculated. So, here q e will be equal to 0 0.321 and k 1 will be 0 0.619.
you know for the initial concentration of 2.14. Similarly, for other initial concentration this corresponding value of q e and k 1 are given here. Okay. So, I think you understood this problem from this experimental data of this time versus that you know uh, uh, q t value you will be able to calculate what will be the equilibrium adsorb uh, amount of adsorbate and also what will be the rate constant just by fitting this you know pseudo first order equation here. Then coming to that uh, pseudo second order model, here also this uh, model can be used to assess that you know uh, to find out what will be the equilibrium value of adsorbate and also what will be the uh, rate constant. In this case uh, this model uh, generally assumes that you know the rate of adsorption of solute is uh, proportional to the available sites on the adsorbent and the reaction rate is uh, dependent on the amount of solute on the surface of the adsorbent and the driving force for this is uh, q e minus q t it will be proportional to the number of active sites that is available on the adsorbent surface. And the general form of this pseudo second order model is given by equation number 4 here that is d q t by d t is equal to k 2 into q e minus q t whole square. The parameter here k 2 is called that pseudo second order rate constant. And after integration of this equation number 4 with this boundary condition here given the t is equal to 0 to t at this time interval the q t will be equal to 0 to q t within this range respectively and with this boundary condition after integration it will yield like t by q t that will be equal to 1 by k 2 q e square plus 1 by q e. Now, this pseudo second order constants can be determined from a graph of t by q t versus t. And when this solute concentration is low, this equation will explain that adsorption mechanism more than any other kinetic model. Whereas, at high initial concentration this pseudo first order model is favored uh, accordingly okay, at this you know uh, low concentration of solute. Let us do an example for this also. In this case the adsorption of cadmium ions on two bones are has been studied using a bash adsorbed. The experimental data was analyzed using Zorfian kinetic models that is second uh, order pseudo second order model. In this case also you have to find out what will be the equilibrium amount of adsorbed and the rate constant. So, here also same data are given here for different initial concentration of the solute yet at a different time what will be the amount of adsorbate adsorbed at time t that is given in the uh, respective column. So, here also you have to find out that you know equilibrium constant and also you know that equilibrium amount of adsorbed amount. So, here uh, you know in this way also we have drawn this uh, you know graph based on this experimental data. Here we have actually uh, you know that uh, simplified this equation like this t by q t is equal to t by q e plus 1 by q uh, k 2 q e square okay, that is equal to y is equal to m x plus c where y is equal to q by k t and uh, m will be equal to what uh, here. Uh, here uh, it will be uh, I think uh, this uh, time what is the time here uh, no uh, this uh, slope will be equal to 1 by q e and uh, intercept will be equal to what 1 by k 2 q e square. So, if you uh, plot this uh, this uh, t by q t versus uh, time okay, then you will be able to find out what will be the you know that 1 by q e value and also 1 by k 2 q e square value. So, from this you know slope and intercept you will be able to find out this value of you know uh, q e and uh, k 2 value. So, here uh, in this graph it is shown that for different solute concentration initial solute concentration these plots are given at uh, initial concentration of 2.14 the plot is given here uh, uh, this one 
I think this one is your uh, this one is your uh, for 2.14 and this uh, model is 2.69 and this one is for 3.17. So, uh, from this you know data and you will be find out what will be the slope and what will be the intercept. So, from this slope and intercept you can easily calculate what will be the QE and K2 value and here after calculation this QE and K2 value are given for the respective initial concentration of C0 at 2.14 and 2.69 and 2.3.17 uh, millimole. And you will see that if you increase the initial concentration this you will see that you know equilibrium value is uh, uh, you know decreasing whereas, this rate constant it will be you know that increasing in order. Then another model by which you can also uh, analyze this you know uh, rate equation for this you know adsorption. In this case uh, it is called intra particle diffusion model IP model and the model is widely applied to examine the rate limiting step during adsorption. The adsorption of solute in a solution that involves mass transfer of adsorbate, uh, surface diffusion and pore diffusion. And film diffusion here is an you know that independent step whereas, surface and pore diffusion may occur simultaneously. So, here we are having that mass transfer of adsorbate that will be you know accessed based on that film diffusion, surface diffusion and pore diffusion. Whereas, this film diffusion is an independent step whereas, surface diffusion and pore diffusion may vary or occur simultaneously. It is also called Weber and Morris model that you have to remember. The model is expressed by this equation here Q t is equal to K p root over t plus c. Here K p is called rate constant which will be expressed by this unit here mg by gram minute to the power 0 0.5 and c is the boundary layer thickness which determines the boundary layer effect higher values will give you the greater effect here. If c is equal to 0 in that case you can say that this uh, intra particle diffusion model that will uh, you know intra particle diffusion that will be controlled uh, or uh, you know that uh, and uh, this IP uh, diffusion controls that adsorption process. And if c not is equal to 0 then the plot gives the multiple linear sections and these sections corresponds to the different mechanism that control the you know adsorption process. So, here this is also another uh, important model that is intra particle diffusion model here basically considering that whenever solute will be you know adsorbing onto the surface how that mass transfer happens that mass transfer happens that means solute transfer happens by diffusion. Now, there are three types of diffusion one is called film diffusion another is called surface diffusion and also pore diffusion and those diffusion which diffusion will be controlled or you can say that uh, whether this diffu all those diffusions will be controlled or not that can be assessed by this equation model equation which is called intra particle diffusion model equation. And this model equation says that it will be actually proportional to that you know uh, square root of you know time and where proportionality constant will be uh, regarded as what is that you know rate constant whereas, that extra term that is c here added this terms basically will give you that whether this you know uh, you know adsorption will be that diffusion controlled or not. In this case if c is equal to 0 then you can say that intra particle diffusion controls the adsorption process. You know if there is a suppose boundary layer of that film that is that that thickness will give you to you and in that uh, you know boundary layer thickness will determine the you know adsorption process whether it will be that film diffusion or not. So, in that case boundary layer effect will be there and this higher values of c it will be that effect will be more in that case. And if suppose c is not 0 and the plot gives multiple linear sections there. So, in that case those sections will correspond to the different mechanism of that you know adsorption process by you know dominated by that surface diffusion or pore diffusion 
uh, there. So, here in this case uh, that C value will give you that corresponding value. Let us do an example here also to find out that you know rate constant and C value here. The adsorption again the same problem that adsorption of cadmium ions onto bones are has been studied using a bass adsorption process and the experimental data also is given as per earlier whatever given in the tables here also the same data are given and here also you have to analyze this data based on this intraparticle diffusion. And uh, in this case also you have to find out that model parameters like here QP and C. So, in this case simply you have to plot that QT versus root over T, you have to find it out what will be the root over T value and then QT corresponding value you know. So, if you plot it you will get this uh, value and if you fit that straight line equation here again with this then you will have this you know corresponding value of slope and intercept and from those slope and intercept you will be you know having that KP value and you know C value respectively. So, for different initial concentration of that solute you will be having uh, you know this KP value and C value for uh, different initial you know solute concentration ok like this here. Here also we can see that as uh, you know solute concentration increased there you know that uh, rate constant will also you know uh, increased and uh, this uh, diffusion control or not as a surface control or diffusion control that will give you based on this C value. If since C is uh, you know not is equal to 0, so we can say that it will be you know either surface control or you know diffusion control uh, adsorption process. If suppose uh, C is equal to 0, it is not coming exactly 0, so you cannot say that there will be a, you know that, uh, uh, that diffusion controls that uh, adsorption process ok. Fine. So, uh, I think you understood this problem of that different uh, model like one is called uh, you know uh, pseudo first order model, pseudo second order model and also intraparticle model. These three models are very important you have to know these three only as per your using uh, curriculum I think it is uh, more than enough to know and uh, in uh, also other uh, courses I think in mass transfer operations that you will learn more about this you know adsorption and there are also different techniques for that you will be uh, I think knowing there. So, here we are uh, limiting up to these three models here there are so many other different you know uh, kinetic models are there. So, we will not be discussing here you can learn it uh, uh, by consulting other books if you have some other interest there. And then uh, uh, also we have discussed that different mechanism of that uh, controlling adsorption here. Uh, first mechanism like this mass transfer that bulk movement of that solid particle is happened as soon as the, the adsorbent surface uh, is dropped onto the you know solution also after desorption. And this process is too fast thus it is not considered during the design of kinetic system. And in the second mechanism is that it is called the film diffusion, it involves the slow movement of the solutes from the boundary layer to the adsorption you know adsorbent surface. And third mechanism is that when the solute reaches the surface of the adsorbent they move to the pores of the adsorbent. And fourth mechanism is that the final mechanism it is involves the rapid adsorptive you know attachment of the solute on the active sites of the pores. And uh, in this case uh, it will be a rapid process and it is not considered during the engineering design of kinetics. So, if the system is characterized by poor mixing, small solute size and low concentration film diffusion becomes the rate controlling step otherwise you know intraparticle diffusion controls the process. So, this point uh, is very important you have to remember it. So, uh, we have discussed that uh, in the adsorption uh, uh, module what is the basic principle and what is the application, what are the different isotherms and also in this lecture we have discussed that what is the kinetic equations based on which you can you know analyze the adsorption process to find it out what will be the rate constant of that adsorption by pseudo uh, first order reaction, pseudo you know uh, second order reaction and also that intraparticle of uh, you know diffusion uh, uh, model. And uh, from those models you will be able to find out what will be the rate constant and also equilibrium amount of adsorbent which is adsorbed by the adsorbent. So, uh, I think you understood this process 
and here uh, we will give you the uh, last lecture and uh, uh, by this last lecture I want to say that uh, 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 please go through that lectures again and if you have any uh, doubt uh, in the lectures that uh, you can contact with me directly by through this mail or uh, through that you know portal uh, as per NPTEL and uh, in this regard I wish uh, you all the best for the course. Thank you. Thank you.